well, it's time for us to go and talk about probably one of the most important gaming consoles that ever meant everything to me, and this is the Nintendo DS Lite. Now, this was probably the most impactful device I was ever given, because if I was never gifted the Nintendo DS Lite, I don't think I would ever even been involved in technology at all, and for some of you that might be a good thing, but me personally with the Nintendo DS Lite, this was probably the most important device I could ever think about for like my upbringing. When I think about phones, when I think about like gaming consoles, this is the thing that stands out the most, and it's so insane because I used this thing as much as I could. I didn't have the most amount of games for it at the time, but looking back, the games that I did play on this thing really did shape my, I guess, enthusiasm and technology. Now, I would still say, you know, many, many years later, the DS Lite is still completely worth buying. I think it's about like 13 years old now, which is insane. I still remember when I was given this thing, and this was a direct successor in a way to the Nintendo DS. Now, it was a step, it was an iteration of the Nintendo DS, so it wasn't like a complete direct, it wasn't like a main, like, it wasn't like the next generation console, but it was, a th it was almost what Nintendo should have made when they originally made the Nintendo DS. I feel like they shouldn't have made the DS, the original one, the way it looked, but I'm glad that a few years later they were quickly able to adapt and they were able to make the Nintendo DS Lite because this is by far not only one of my favorite consoles, but one of my favorite designed consoles of all time. This type of design architecture kept the lights on, I would say. Oh, maybe not quite because they had the Wii at, you know, Wii there too. But for a period of time, I mean, their portable consoles were kind of the better selling consoles when the 3DS and Wii U were out. And I look at a console like the Nintendo DS Lite and the 3DS is way more in line with something like a DS Lite than even the original Nintendo DS. So like I said, very, very insane console right there. And I think those things are the things that I kind of think about with this console. Although internally it did have some big changes, externally it was insane. Now on the top and just on the outside, this was an overall smaller console in a way than the original Nintendo DS. So this specific console was in a smaller form factor and this was a big thing I would say. The screens were still very big and they were actually bright and they had pretty good resolution. I still pick up my original Nintendo DS from time to time when filming these videos and I still think, I mean, that console just doesn't look that good, but it was very powerful, I'm sure, for, you know, being the first generation Nintendo DS. But I look at the DS Lite and when they actually went ahead and, you know, leveled out the top, they basically gave it a really good display or really good displays for that matter. It really meant that Nintendo really, really was listening to people at that time and they did a tremendous job at upgrading this console. Now, I always liked the like the reflective top portion of the DS Lite. I think it looked super cool and that was something that was really awesome. Being able to see that reflective material made it look and feel like such a professional device, which was so awesome. Now, on top of that, when you open this thing up, this console looked very different, you know, when you actually flip this thing open. So for one, the displays were, I think, better on this console. I mean, they were way better on this console than the other specific, you know, from the successor than from its like predecessor. But the other thing is, is that you actually had the start and select buttons that were now moved. So this was kind of pushed away from like the top portion. I've, I never understood why Nintendo did that. They now moved them over to like the bottom right, which was very cool. And I like that a ton. You also had, I think the stylus moved a different area and it also was a bigger stylus as well, which was really important. The power button also was now placed with a power slider that was on the right side of the specific console. And that was a really cool thing that came with this console. I mean, there were a lot of changes just on the outside. Now, I don't recall there being a big performance jump. I think there was probably around the same type of performance between both. However, Nintendo.Fandom.com does state and I kind of forget about this all the time, this was the last console to actually bring, you know, Game Boy Advance backwards compatibility. After the DS Lite, there was no direct backwards compatibility with any Game Boy Advance games. Now, you are able to play like virtual consoles and those types of things, but you can't plug in the Game Boy Advance cartridge to that console. So that was a big thing going for this console too, and people really got upset about it when the DSi came out. But my personal experience with the DS Lite was unfathomable. I don't think I would ever have a device, maybe like my Nexus 4 phone, like, or my LG G2, like, it's gonna be very, very hard for me to replicate the feelings I had with this specific device with any other device, including phones or tablets or gaming consoles. The DS Lite, when I was, you know, probably like in middle school or something, was the thing I was looking forward to when I was going back home. When I was going back home, I just could not wait to open my DS Lite and go straight into Super Mario 64 DS and run through that game as you know fast as I can. 
And also, I think it was the bundle pack with Nintendo. And I think I also had the bundle pack with New Super Mario Bros. DS. And that was the only game I had for like many, many months. So it wasn't until like many months after I think I ended up buying Super Mario 64 DS. Then I ended up getting GTA Chinatown Wars. And I think I got Animal Crossing Wild World. And I got maybe like a few other games too. But the ones that stick out to me most are New Super Mario Bros. DS, Super Mario 64 DS, and Animal Crossing Wild World. And those were some of the better games I would say that this console actually got. But that's just scratching the surface. There were so many games available for the Nintendo DS Lite. And looking back, it's kind of funny because like, I don't even remember like half of these games. Meaning that some of the best selling games that came out for the DS, I never even actually had a chance to play. So Mario Kart DS at that time, I wasn't able to play, I just didn't have it. Since then, I did play it. I never played any of the Pokemon games I probably should. There was the Mario Party DS I also played. Nintendogs came out for this console, which I also played a little bit, but there were like three or four different versions of that Nintendogs. And there was just so many other games that it's like not even funny at all. And looking back, as I look through all of these games, one thing is for sure, there were tons of games available for this console, and Nintendo made tons of money from this console as well. And during that moment, I'm sure, they had the success of the Nintendo DS, and they had the success of the Nintendo Wii at that time too. It must have just, I mean, Nintendo must have just been printing money during that time. So, in my opinion, when I look at something like the Nintendo DS Lite, I still get butterflies in my stomach, and I just don't get that feeling from a lot of other consoles out there. Like, when I'm going to the grocery store, I'm not, like, I'm not like excited to go on my phone and like go through Twitter and like, oh, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go home to go back on like Instagram or something. But during that moment when you're like in class and you're like, man, I cannot wait to go back home and play with my Nintendo DS. It's kind of things like that, which it's kind of things like that, which kind of brings so much nostalgia to you. And it's such an interesting experience. And I hope you guys are able to experience that sometime if you haven't experienced that yet. And I look at a console like the DS Lite and I still think clearly this is a very, very, very impactful console for the whole entire lineup of Nintendo. And if you've never played a DS Lite, if you've never played any Nintendo DS games, well, if you don't want to buy the hardware, there's tons of emulators out there for you. But it's always nice to go ahead and buy the hardware because you're playing how the game exactly was intended. I personally still play some DS games and some 3DS games, but if I'm playing them on my PC, it's, it makes it a little bit easier experience. But I remember booting up my Nintendo DS Lite and then going straight into New Super Mario Bros and being able to play that game immediately. And it was just such a fun experience. And being able to play it on the actual hardware it was intended to is also an amazing experience as well. So I think the DS Lite is still completely worth buying. It really depends on, you know, do you plan on using it and kind of moving from there? I think these things are actually going up in the resale value. So if that is something you're interested in, like reselling it in the future, then by all means go for it. But I love the DS Lite. It means a lot to me. And if it means a lot to you as well, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it in the comment section below. I'm like choking up making this video. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.